So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to be talking about alternating series. So an alternating series is a series of the form sum from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, a sub n, or negative 1 to the n plus 1, a sub n, where a sub n is greater than 0 for each n. This is just the technical way of saying that we are, the first term is being added, and then the second subtracted, the next added, then subtracted, so a positive term, a negative term, positive term, a negative term, or vice versa, negative term, positive term, negative term, positive term, and so on. So alternating in the sense that you're alternating the sign of each uh, consecutive term. So let's look at a few examples. So the series 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third minus 1 fourth plus 1 fifth dot 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 is an alternating series. And in fact, it has a, it has a particular name. Remember the, the series 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth and so on. That's the harmonic series. This series is called the alternating harmonic series. So this is an alternating series as is oh, negative 4 plus 7 pi minus 31 plus 2 minus something and so on, where there's no discernible pattern. But the first term is negative, the second term is positive, the third term is negative, the fourth term is positive, and so on. It is alternating because the signs are changing with each term. Let's take a look at it. another example. So the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n tangent of n is not an alternating series. Even though it looks sort of like the same thing that we saw on the previous, um, the previous page, negative 1 to the n, a sub n. But remember, a sub n, all those a sub n's need to be positive. This negative 1 to the n times something doesn't guarantee that you have an alternating series. There are values of n for which tangent of n is positive and for which tangent of n is negative. So if these two things don't line up, it doesn't mean that you're going to have, uh, if these two things don't line up, you're not necessarily going to have positive term, negative term, positive term, negative term. So since there are values of n for which tangent of n is less than 0, right, so not an alternating series. There is, however, a very nice test for the convergence of alternating series called the alternating series test. Let's take a look at that. So this is the alternating series test. So if all of the terms, well, all the terms are going to be greater than 0, these a sub n's. And if the sequence of a sub n's forms something that doesn't increase, in other words, a sub n plus 1 is always less than or equal to a sub n. So this is true for all n. And the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals 0, then the alternating series, sum from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, a sub n, converges. So a few things to note. First, I didn't put the case where we start with negative 1 to the n plus 1, but of course this conclusion stays the same. It doesn't matter whether you start with a positive term or a negative term. The result stays the same. So think of this as an abbreviation for this series converges and negative 1 to the n plus 1. The series formed with an n plus 1 and the exponent also converges. 
Another thing to notice that this is almost the converse to the divergence test. Remember the divergence test says that if this limit doesn't equal zero for any series, then, or sorry, if the limit of the terms doesn't equal zero for any series, then that series diverges. And this says that if you're working with an alternating series, then if this limit does equal zero, as long as your terms are never increasing, then the series converges. So it's almost a converse um, to the divergence test for alternating series. So let's look at an example. So we'll come back to the uh, alternating harmonic series. So since 0 is less than n, 1 over n plus 1, which is less than 1 over n, and the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n equals 0, the series sum from n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n converges by the alternating series test. One more thing to note here, um, I started at n equals 1 instead of n equals 0. That doesn't matter, right? Taking part of the first, uh, the first few terms off of a series doesn't change convergence to divergence. So if we start at n equals 1, which in this case we have to because we're dividing by n, it doesn't change the conclusion. We still have convergence if these conditions are met. Let's take a look at one more example. So does the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n times n squared over 3 to the n converge? So we have two things to verify. We have to verify if we want to use the limit, um, the alternating series test, we need to verify that these terms are decreasing, and we need to verify that the limit is zero. So first, the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared over 3 to the n. Remember here, when we're taking the limit, we're taking the limit of the positive part. We're not taking, we don't care about this negative 1 to the n part. That doesn't change the nature of this limit, though. This limit equals 0. So we can associate this with the function x squared over 3 to the x, and then apply L'Hopital's rule and find that this limit equals 0. So we have one part. Now how do we figure out that this thing is decreasing? Well, we know, of that, we know that 3 to the n grows really fast, especially compared to n squared, so it should be decreasing. But how can we verify that? So next, consider the function f of x equals x squared over 3 to the x. Well then f prime of x is 2x times 3 to the x minus x squared times 3 to the x times natural log of 3 all over 3 to the x squared. And we can simplify this. We can factor out an x from both terms in the numerator. We can factor out a 3x as well. So this is x times, uh, sorry, we can factor out a 3 to the x. This is x times 3 to the x, 2 minus x times natural log of 3 over 3 to the x squared. So we want to know when these things, that these things are decreasing. And we're doing this by associating to it this function with x's instead of n's, and then finding its derivative. And so it'll suffice to show that the derivative is negative, or at least negative for sufficiently large values of x. And that's true, because we're, we're taking x as, uh, well, we're thinking of x, excuse me, n is going off to infinity, so x is going to infinity. So this term isn't going to make anything negative. 3 to the x is never going to make anything negative. 3 to the x squared is never going to make anything negative. So the only negative part that can come from this 
is this 2 minus x natural log of 3. So uh, f prime of x is less than 0 when 2 minus x times the natural log of 3 is less than 0, i.e. when x is greater than 2 over the natural log of 3. So for sufficiently large values of x, f prime is negative. That means that for sufficiently large values of n, the inequality that we want, remember the inequality we want is a sub n plus 1 less than or equal to a sub n. So for sufficiently large values of n, this inequality holds. And you could state the alternating series test with a condition like that. For sufficiently large n, this condition holds. Because again, it doesn't matter what happens at finitely many terms at the beginning of the series. What really matters is at some point the behavior as you go off to infinity. So we have this inequality, a sub n plus 1 less than or equal to a sub n. So this series converges by the alternating series test.